One and a half came uh, in the in the original development partners. There were several development partners, and one of them was called Slick FM. Um, and NZ and One Heart were working with with Slick FM, and they used to come in here uh, because we, part of our deal was that we would work with the development partners on certain things, whatever was in the service level agreement. We had service level agreements with each, each development partner, and we said we would do this, they would do. It was like they would do one bit, we would do the other, and vice versa. So we worked with with uh, Slick FM, and one of the it, it came about that you know, a choir were coming in um, and we listened to the choir and they, they, they sounded good and then uh, it was I was getting to know Enzi through Tony from from Slick FM and then uh, to cut a long story short one heart started coming in more and more uh, and we, we just you know, we, we thought what they were doing was great bringing in the kids um, who were, you know, like, wouldn't have access normally to, to to, to Lippe and to the facilities at Lippe. Um, and then we started working together more closely and hopefully um, we'd like to carry on. No, it's not just the end of Cameo. Stephen Enzi is the director of One Heart, One Voice, a gospel choir based in Toxteth. Well, originally um, I was, um, I'm from a musical background. I originally was in a choir when I was a young lad um, in school. Um, when I got to 16, 17, Left school in 1981, and there wasn't a lot of even opportunities out there anyway musically to start with. So usually, like you do, you join the job creation scheme and all the rest of it. Um, and then we used to there used to be a DJ called Ivan Freeman. It was called my, they called him the Russian actually, um, and he was a progressive DJ at that time. He was actually not the most progressive DJ, playing everywhere at all the main clubs and doing things. I used to look up to Ivan, you know, and I'd carry his records, you know go to discos with him, you know, and all that kind of thing, like a little understudy. Through that, I got into like, you know, collecting my own records, doing DJing. Um, but I was always striving to be a vocalist. But the funniest thing was, was that like 17, around those periods of times there, and there was nowhere where you could actually go. There was no one encouraging us to go and sing anywhere. There was no, nothing that I could see visibly. You know what I mean? And, I, and funny enough as well is that I wasn't even aware of like Liverpool's uh, musical Background even, you know, I wasn't, I didn't know nothing about that. And all we knew about was the clubs um, and the after parties, blues, the beans and things like that. And that way was the first chance of I got like getting on a microphone. Sound systems were something that like back then, you know, we, you couldn't go out and buy musical equipment, you know what I mean, if you wanted to run a party. So what you done was basically you built it, you know what I mean? You built your own speakers. Um, there, was, there was technical people out there like London Birmingham who would build you the preamp. You know, preamp is a three-way cross. It's what we basically got a three-way crossover right now, electronic crossover. Those days they were actually made with switches, so you could manually switch things off and on bass, mid-range, and treble. That was the early days of mixing. Um, reggae, what you'd see a sound system mixing. It's where, even really and truly, if you think about it, today's mixing, what a lot of the DJs are doing, actually comes from that era of time. But then I teamed up then. I was working on community radio, local community radio, um, TTFM. Um, and at the local radio was Tony Mitchell. Tony Mitchell, me and Tony teamed up because we were on the radio anyway, and Tony had a connection to um, Cameo and Lippe because he was, he was part of that, that, that infrastructure. Um, and you know, I, we, at the time, because we were working in radio, we wanted to set up DJ workshops. And at the time, no one was even doing DJ workshops. I think there was one DJ workshop before that, and that's what we'd done. We brought, brought in local kids and it's like the sound system, James, you know, basically, before you did come in and did wait and you'd have a go on the mic and rear, 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 but now you did get a little two minutes, you know, like a little play, but with a DJ workshop scenario, you know, they're coming every week, they're learning new moves, we're bringing people like DJs in, even yourself, as you know, you'd come in and done one at the front line, I remember one time, um, on Granby Street when we used to be based there. So from there, we moved on. Now, my first love is music, passionately, as, as in vocals, you know what I mean? Uh, and though I never, you know, I got a bit long in the tooth then, I always thought, well, I'm an MC now, I can chat lyrics and I can sing two songs and that, but I wouldn't mind having a project based around some singers. So me and Tony talked about it and we worked on um, a project. At the time was, it was, we thought we could put 14, 14 odd singers together. We'd done an audition, got some kids together. And the whole project was based on um, performance, um, working on kids who've got their own little songs, um, bringing a vocal coach in with them, um, choreographer. 
And that actually blossomed into the choir because although they were individuals, the one way we realised to keep them as a group was as a choir. That wasn't the first, I mean, don't get me wrong, I didn't think it was going to be a choir straight away. I thought we'll get a group of kids. It just evolved like that. It evolved, you know what I mean? That's the beauty of, of the choir because the choir did evolve. Oh, foundation for all the individual singers you can't be you couldn't be in the group unless you then ended up being in the choir so you were getting like choir work and then you were getting individual stuff as well um, we brought Tim Dale Thomas in um, as the technical director to work with us then he's been with us now well three, it will be three years coming in um, February <laughs> And then the individual stuff that you're working on is you're working to their, towards their strengths, really, you know. Because as we say to the choir, no one, we're not guaranteed anyone in this choir is going to be a superstar. Because you don't know music is a big, vast, open, you know, thing. What we want to do is give an opening for them into the music. That way, it's like I said before, my opening was through sound systems. Their opening is to the choir. That choir has individual singers in it. They're then allowed to express themselves as singers. We give them platforms, we set up platforms for them to perform. The choirs grew from strength to strength, you know. Times in our lives, we all have pain, we all have sorrow, but if we are... When we first started out, we, this, we were based in this building through the Cameo Project and through Tony, that was the link. When you say this building? Lippe. Yeah, the Institute. You know, to us. Other than that, we'd have been, you know, we were, it was supposed to scramble around for rooms because originally we were actually in the Methodist Centre um, and it just wasn't working, you know what I mean? It just was. Basically, Tony, two cameras, they got us in, we started working in here um, and they got us in here two days a week. We used to be in at then, I think we were in here on Thursdays, Thursday evening and a Saturday morning. So Thursdays was individual workshop on your individual stuff, Saturday mornings was based around the choir um, and we were in here for a year because that project run for the year with a performance, we actually then culminated in a performance at the um, Paul McCartney Auditorium, which is a wonderful show, I have to say. Um, it surprised me really, because then it just shows sometimes that when you set out in something, you don't know where you're gonna get. came out of the show itself that we'd done, you know, at the beginning we said, oh, we'll end up doing the show, we'll never yes. imagine. And like I said, because we were based in, we were based in this building, that itself was a major, it was major that made that project work. Because when the kids are turning up to a building like this, through that front door, there's a different thing going on here, you understand me?